The entire plan of redemption, I reckon, is designed to reconcile us to one another as much as we are to reconcile to a most gracious and merciful God through the blood of Jesus Christ and the Israel Messiah Yeshua. We're able to connect just like you go into a room and you switch on the light. Electricity's already there. It's been operating and you go in and you turn it on, get connected. We want to connect with that, that continual hope, the promises of eternal life through the sanctifying and, and, and comforting power of the Holy Spirit, which may be obtained as we come to the Lord through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There was this neural psychologist named Paul, Dr. Paul Purcell article, he read, he read um, a book he, he'd had, um, it's called The Heart's Code, about transferring issues. Dr. Purcell provides some intriguing insights into his belief that the physical heart contains within it memories belonging to the original person before they transferred, right? So some of his uh, research in his book examines how um, several cases of heart transplant recipients who re reported how they mysteriously inherited some of their donors' traits. This is really fascinating, and, and I see this from a, a biblical perspective as well as what science is uncovering now. So um, there's a case uh, now that um, it was a, of an eight-year-old girl at the time who received a heart transplant from a ten-year-old girl who had sadly suffered death by being murdered. And um, she, the, the, the girl, the eight-year-old girl, began to have continual um, nightmares about... Um, and finally, they, they called in a, a psychiatrist uh, to help the child, who soon uh, decided that the police should be notified and brought in to lodge an investigation with the information she was conveying. So the eight-year-old heart recipient was actually able to identify key clues about the murder of her donor from her donor's heart, including who the murderer was, when and how the murder took place, and she was even able to um, accurately share the, the words spoken by the murderer to the victim. That's really astounding information. So the police going on this information were ultimately able to prove this uh, stuff true and were able to arrest the murderer who was convicted for his crime. Now, after all, your heart is like a mini brain. I've shared this many times now at the Upper Room Fellowship and in my books like What Was I Thinking? <clears throat> but your heart's got a mini brain. It's like 40,000 neurons in it that can sense, they can feel, they can learn, they can recall, they remember. Your heart acts like a brain. Therefore, it sends messages to your brain in your head about all the body feels and much more than that. But uh, just suffice it to say that the scientific research is showing and the heart has its own mysterious ways of n knowing this incredible information. Now, thousands of years ago, um, w was written in Psalms 139.14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, that my soul knoweth right well. So keep that in mind here. Dr. Bissell's shared about, um, if I recall, it was like 73 different case studies here, which all pointed to the fact that both the brain and the heart hold information, vital information about a person. Your heart will not lie, even if your spoken words do. There's a spirit of fear behind all lies, and keep in mind the devil is the father of lies, and I would reckon the devil's got quite a lot of fear right now. He's more filled with fear than anybody else. He knows his time is short and he's stepping it up, right? So according to this research, the, the analysis, the, the cell communication that um, occurs through the body on a continual basis can continue to occur even after an organ's been removed from one person and transplanted into another person's body. So this means that the information from the donor appears to be able to connect, somehow it's able to install itself in the recipient's memory as if they lived through the other person's life experiences. That's just fantastic. I mean, that's really quite extraordinary. So this research is showing when someone has an organ transplant, like a heart transplant, the cellular memory is able to readapt to its new host home. 
For example, depending on how the person died, if the person had died maybe um, in some sort of falling accident, um, the person that's the recipient of that donor's heart might wake up dreaming the, and feeling like they're falling, even though they never fell before and had any kind of falling accident. So now there's, there's numbers of cases of this sort of thing happening all around the world. The person who received the new heart may have all sorts of information being transferred into them. It kind of like um, you know, one of those memory sticks you, you um, stick into the computer and you transfer a file, or take it on, put it in another computer. And there's appears much information is, is transferable. So in other words, everything is being recorded. And if someone, it, 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 you know, it was done in by foul play of some kind and, and the transplanted heart able to show the person whom it was transplanted into such information as, as the murderer's face, um, what they were actually doing at the crime scene, what they said, um, they're able to make a positive identity, even to give police artists um, a way to make composite sketches of the criminals. I mean, so this murderer got arrested and justice was served. That young girl stopped having all those hellish nightmares. Uh, uh, you know, this is going back to Genesis. There's an account of the story of Cain and Abel. And the first recorded murder may take on new meaning for us now as we understand this new information coming forward. Genesis 4, 10 says, um, and, and he said, God says, why hast thou, what, what has thou done the, the voice of thy brother's blood cries unto me from the ground? So think about that. What spirit, uh, you know, spirit of envy and jealousy that goes unchecked, malice in the heart, ends with a spirit of murder by somebody's hands? So this should not be surprising as the Lord designed you to live forever. I mean, your, your brain right now can store over, um, 3 million years worth of information. Well, why would your brain need to be able to restore that much information? I don't know what happens after 3, three million years. Maybe you just do like disk cleanup. But we well, don't need those files anymore. But look, um, really, just think about this. Just understand, I mean, I'm not against anyone here, but we're trying to save lives, so we're trying to bless, we're trying to restore, um, not against heart transplants or anything. I'm just saying that we should take authority over any spirits of trauma that are involved in it. You know, we read in um, John 15, 7, it says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Listen, all things, all things are possible with God. So I just pray the Lord's supernatural peace healing, provision, protection, to cover you always with oceans of agape love in the almighty name of Jesus, Yeshua. I'll see you next time. God bless you all.